Welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss, and this is the very first podcast for Unit 2, which I'm going to call The Perfect Planet. Um, I think this photograph taken by an astronaut 1968, 45 years ago, kind of helps illustrate why I might have called it The Perfect Planet. You just you know, look at the Earth from outer space, and you just you know have to wonder, why is our planet so conducive to life? Why is it so moderate? And why has life been so successful on our planet as composed of every other planet, at least in our solar system? Big ideas we'll cover will include why the Earth's orbit helps uh, the planet have such a moderate climate, Earth's atmosphere, Earth's oceans, and the roles all those things kind of play in, in, in the climate of the Earth. So let's start digging into the Earth's orbit. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the shape of the Earth. Is the Earth a perfect sphere? Or is it an obligate spheroid, which means it's a little bit more like an oval or an egg shape? Well, actually, instead of being a perfect sphere, Earth is actually a little bit of an obligate spheroid. The reason for that being that as the Earth rotates on its axis, it actually tends to bulge out at the equator. So the equator is a little bit wider and then, um, than it is uh, from north to south. And then what evidence do we have that the Earth is not flat? Well, I mean, obviously, we have tons of satellite evidence. You can just you know, look at it from the perspective of outer space, like the picture from 1968, the astronaut orbiting the moon. You know, but uh, even before we had that opportunity, y you could see a ship sailing off into the horizon. The ship is going to dip below the horizon as it disappears. Um, so you can kind of get, the, get an idea that the Earth is very large, but also spherical. And in addition, Earth uh, casts a shadow that is a round shadow on the moon uh, on a lunar eclipse as well. So I know we already covered Earth's magnetic field in Unit 1. Um, we talked about properties of the Earth, but, you know, it's interesting to note that, you know, here's the Earth on the right, and Earth's magnetic field extends far beyond the planet, way into outer space. And what it's going to do is it's just going to shield all these um, potentially very harmful rays from the sun and help keep us uh, safe from those. You know, if you were in a, if you were in a spaceship, um, you know, out over here, you, you could be, you know, you're exposed to, you know, solar flares, radiation, that kind of stuff, um, and you're outside of the protective magnetic field of the Earth. All right, so the Earth spins on its axis, um, and that spinning movement is called the rotation of the Earth. Um, it actually takes, you know, 24 hours, actually a little less than that. The Earth requires 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds to make one complete rotation, but the fact is, that as the Earth rotates, it also revolves around the sun, so it actually takes 24 hours for one day to get back into the right position uh, in regard to the sun. So um, that it, it's going to seem like it's 24 hours, but it's really 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds. Now, I think this is, uh, this is such a cool experiment. You know, why, do, why is there a pendulum uh, in this picture here? Well, you know, think about how, how, how can we prove that the Earth rotates um, before we were, you know, able to go in outer space and observe this kind of stuff. Um, what you can actually do, and this is such a cool experiment, you, you set up a pendulum in motion. A pendulum is simply um, a weight suspended on a string, and you just get it set in motion, and it'll just rotate back and forth. And that's a pendulum, simple pendulum. And if you place a pendulum basically anywhere on the Earth except the equator, and allow it to go back and forth and back and forth, what you'll notice is that the pendulum... Uh, t starts looking like it's changing its rotation, and I'll show you off on the side here. What I mean is, if you set it in motion, it's going to start looking like it's shifting and changing its direction, going back and forth, back and forth over the course of a day. It's not moving. It's going back and forth, but it's not changing its motion. What's actually happening is that the Earth is rotating underneath it, so to the observer on Earth, us, it's that we are actually going around the pendulum, and it just looks to us like it is changing direction, but it has been set in motion, and it continues to go in a normal motion. Now, at the equator, you're not actually going to see that. At the equator, the pendulum is just going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth as the Earth, uh, as the earth rotates. So Earth rotates on a daily basis, and it also revolves um, around the sun, you know. So let's go ahead and just briefly talk about the the revolution and, and just look at our neighbors in the solar system here. So obviously um, the solar system starts with the sun at the center. That's most of the mass of the solar system. And then you've got your inner terrestrial planets, right? Mercury, Venus, Earth, which has a moon, 
and then Mars. All right, and then right outside of that, you've got the asteroid belt, and that's kind of separating the inner terrestrial planets uh, with the the four gas giants. All right, so the gas giants are going to include uh, Jupiter, uh, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then that's it for the planets. Um, Pluto is not a planet anymore, I guess. Um, and outside of that, you've got the Kuiper belt, rhymes with Viper, and um, there's just a lot of objects out there, um, dwarf planets and so on, like Pluto and other objects. Well, so in ancient times, when one looked at the sky and or thought about the heavens, or basically anything that you can see in the sky at night, the heavens, um, the, the heavens were, were considered, well, heavenly, perfect. And so for the longest time, um, humans, people, really thought that everything in outer space must be perfect. And what could be more perfect than a perfect sphere or circle? And so the orbits of planets, sun, everything was thought to be um, spherical, perfectly, and even even mod, like great revolutionary thinkers like Copernicus that that was able to place the sun at the center of the solar system instead of the Earth, um, still hung on to the idea that the that the orbit of of objects outside of you know the Earth, anything in outer space or the heavens, was perfect. Well, that's not the case, and we know now that the orbit of the Earth and pretty much everything out there is elliptical, meaning it's not it's not a perfect circle. Okay, so Earth's orbit is an ellipse. And sometimes we're closer to the sun and sometimes we're farther away. Can I listen to you? Oops, that was my son. I forgot to hit pause and I was still recording. My five-year-old Mason's a huge Earth Science fan. So here we go. Let's finish it up. Here's the last slide of the podcast here. Uh, so we're, let's talk about Earth's orbit and Earth revolution around the sun. So basically, you know, I just mentioned the last slide why, you know, we don't have seasons because of the proximity of the sun. So why do we have seasons? Well, it's because of the 23 and a half degree tilt of the Earth on its axis. So as Earth... Um, goes around the sun as it revolves and rotates and goes around the sun in its orbit. It is sometimes situated so that, you know, the northern hemisphere is receiving the most direct sunlight. Sometimes the equator receives the most direct sunlight. Sometimes the southern hemisphere receives the most direct sunlight. Or again, here, the equator. All right, so when the north pole is angled towards the sun... It is a northern summer or southern winter. When the North Pole is angled away from the sun, it's a northern winter or southern summer. All right, and twice a year, the equator is receiving the most direct sunlight, and so it'll either be uh, northern autumn or northern spring, and southern autumn or southern spring.